Hip dysplasia is a common and serious hereditary disease, mainly in large dogs. As the dog's ages increase, there is usually arthritis at the joint causing pain and lameness. Diagnosis is based on radiographic changes. Because so many purebred AKC registered dogs are affected, there has been much more effort to research, treat, and predict the occurrence of this disease. The following machine parameters will be chosen in order to obtain a diagnostic x-ray according to OFA standards. The affected limb should be placed closest to the cassette. Measure at the thickest part of the limb. Use anesthesia or tranquilizer if possible, especially if the patient is in pain. You can also use positioning devices such as wedges to decrease geometrical distortion. Other positioning devices to decrease radiation exposure to personnel include rope or like string to stretch the leg. Consider tabletop technique such as the non-grid on small patients which are less than 10 centimeters. When long bones are x-rayed, include the joints proximal and distal. Be sure to remove any splints or bandages if possible. Organizations such as OFA and PenHIP research and keep records of many hereditary canine diseases such as hip dysplasia. OFA veterinarians evaluate x-rays sent in by other veterinarians and grade the hips. Since hip dysplasia is polygenetic, if a dog has abnormal hips, there is a high chance that the offspring will also be abnormal. I realize a large portion of this video is obviously multiple views of this patient's pelvis because the veterinarian that we were taking these x-rays for was super picky, but I am still going to talk about the positioning for the VD extended hip projection view. The head should be pulled forward and secured with a sandbag over the neck if needed. The forelimbs should be pulled forward cranially and secured with a sandbag or tied to the table. The hind limbs should be positioned as follows. One person should grasp each hind limb at the level of the metatarsus so the thumb faces each other on the medial aspect of the patient's limb. The femurs are rotated inward so that the patella lies over the tracheal groove of the femurs and the femurs are parallel, and the long axis of the spine is level with the table. At the back of the proximal stifle, have another person place a piece of tape long enough so it can overlap to the lateral aspect of the opposite femur. Take each end of the tape and forcibly pull to the opposite limb at the level of the proximal stifle to ensure that the femurs are maintained in a medial rotation. Lower the limbs until a point of resistance is felt. Place a pad underneath the tarsus to maintain it. It's best to also tape each limb individually at the metatarsus. Extend the limbs and secure with tape caudally so that the two digits are even with each other. Place a sandbag over the distal portion of the limbs to further keep them level with the table.
OFA hip radiographs prefer that you use high contrast techniques of the extremities. This means using high MAS settings and low KVP settings, usually 50 to 70. Finally, let's talk a little bit more about the OFA evaluation of grading the hip dysplasia. Through the OFA, board certified radiologists evaluate the hips on the VD hip extended view and they are categorized as normal, borderline, and dysplastic. Excellent, good, and fair hip grades are within normal limits and are given OFA numbers. This information is released to the public and is accepted by the American Kennel Club or the AKC and the Canadian Kennel Club for dogs with permanent identification such as a tattoo or microchip. The radiograph is then reviewed and a report ver verifies the abnormal radiographic findings if radiographs reveal borderline, mild, moderate, or severe hip dysplasia grades. Dysplastic hip grades are not in the public domain unless the owner has chosen to open the database.